but would I do anything differently? Um, not really, you know. Um, some people say, well, you could have started earlier, but, um, you know, we came into this race only when we realized that there was no one else that was coming into the race that was talking about the important issues. So it was a late start on our behalf. You know, uh, the opposition had a year's head start. And when you're going around the state, to talk to people with very personal relationships at their kitchen table, you know, to try to offset that in a matter of three months is awfully difficult. But it's amazing how far we came. I mean, to get like 42% of the vote of the people here uh, to say, let's get a primary, that was very encouraging. But ultimately, you know, I think it was all well worth it because every candidate today is now talking about the things they weren't talking about just a couple of months ago. Tax caps, spending caps, uh, waiving or cutting the capital gains tax, the spur investment. Nobody was talking about these specifics. It was all this nebulous, generalized type of campaigning. We came out with a specific plan. It forced all the other candidates to take notice. They were actually copying our plan, which is a good thing for the people because now every candidate's talking about tax caps and spending caps. Are you going to see as a Republican or as a Democrat? You, I mean, you put a lot on the line here. You assume that Republicans would go for you, stand behind you, support you in your party conversion. Why do you think they didn't go for you? Well, you know, it's one thing to change parties and to be accepted, which I really think I was. The people were fantastic throughout the whole state. You know, it's a much tougher thing to say you're going to turn parties and then become the standard bearer for that party at the same time. You know, so the people were fantastic. It was an unbelievable experience. I'd do it again in a heartbeat.